Uh, we have Macro Micro, which is a traveling exhibition uh, which explores the small scale world of biology. Okay, and so I've got a, a model here in front of me. What is this actually? This is our macro model of what's called a nutlet, which is a kind of seed belonging to a noxious weed called the hound's tongue. And the hound's tongue is very pervasive. Uh, it's found, I believe, in 43 states in America. Uh, and it's been so successful because of its ability to spread itself around. Uh, the original seed is down here. Uh, it's very tiny, <laughs> yeah. but once you scan it and enlarge it uh, using the 3D printer, uh, now we can blow it up to this bigger size and immediately understand why it's so tenacious. It's covered with all these little grappling hooks and those will snag on the fur of a passing animal or maybe on your socks or something. So that's what hiking. this is here, right? That is an actual fiber that was trapped in the burr. Uh, yeah, we, we try to scan clean specimens, but we missed that. And when we put it in the scanner, and we got the results and I went, oh no, are we gonna have to rescan? What's what's this junk in here? And then I realized, oh no, that's, that's the burr doing its job. It just caught some fiber here. Uh, let's leave that there. It's very illustrative, so we went with it. But, can you show uh, me the porcupine quill over here? Uh, yeah, we, we can take a look at that. Um, this guy right here, uh, wow. the tip is kind of the business end of the quill, and yep. about the last two millimeters or so is what we've enlarged up here. Uh, wow. And as soon as you get big enough to, to see the scale, it's immediately obvious why the porcupine quill is notoriously difficult and painful to extract. Uh, You've got all these little barbs that are pointing backwards so that the more you pull, the more trauma you do to the surrounding tissues. And you've got a bird skull over here, right? Because I have a bat skull. Bat skull, yes, that's right. Okay. Uh, yes, I have here, uh, this is the skull of the horseshoe bat. Right. Uh, that is a Southeast Asian species. Uh, the whole animal only weighs about six and a half grams, so he's right. tiny. Uh, and here we've brought it up uh, to a more manageable size, uh, enabling us to see in better detail things like the dentition uh, the structure at the front of the skull is interesting uh, they have a whole bunch of soft tissue that goes there creating this kind of leaf shaped thing uh, kind of a little megaphone of sorts um, and they can broadcast their echolocation sounds now in uh, the, the final exhibit how big will this skull be uh, we're looking for probably like the size of a polar bear skull or wow. so we, we want to go pretty dynamic with these uh, and the nice part is, is it's all scalable so if we want we can have a small one that's this size that we could give to educators to hand to visitors and share with people. Um, but then we can have a large, large version of it uh, behind the uh, the glass, so to speak, um, that can really give a, a large format picture of, of the animal. So the final exhibit will be how many pieces, how many scanned objects? Uh, I think we're looking at about probably 40 of the macro model features. Right. Uh, and that's going to range all across taxa. We're, we're looking at insects and, and spiders, we're looking at plants, and uh, we're looking at uh, parts of very large animals, but maybe just the texture on the bottoms of their feet or things like that. So it's, it's everywhere. And when will the show be ready to roll? Uh, we're looking at early 2015. Uh, square footage on the exhibit I think will be approximately 2,000, 2,200, something in there. So not a huge footprint, uh, pretty easy fit for, for most of the years. Okay, thanks for showing it.